in a draft class chock full of number two complimentary type guys like Zay Jones, Cooper Cup, and Carlos Henderson, it's easy for a guy like Amba Edatawa to get lost in the shuffle, especially after a quiet two years from Maryland before transferring over to Syracuse for his last year of eligibility. However, Tawa started the 2016 season on fire, catching 47 balls for 834 yards and six touchdowns in his first six games. Let's jump to the tape. We'll see just how good Tawa can be in the NFL. One of the first things I noticed was just how much bigger Tawa plays than his six foot one listing. With good body lean and control, Tawa can be a quarterback's best friend, giving him a naturally physical target to throw to over the middle of the field and to the sidelines. And while you'll notice he doesn't create a ton of separation despite his 4-4-9-40, he consistently wins at the top of his route and then does a great job putting that big body frame and extended arms on display for his quarterback giving him a clean window to look through and feel confident before targeting Tao downfield. Now I can't sugarcoat it. Tao will put a healthy amount of drops on tape and while it wasn't mind blowing or game changing, it was just enough to take notice and realize there's some concentration issues here and some refinement needs to be done at the next level before it can be considered for consistent playing time. Of course, no one catches everything, and some of his drops were tough grabs for even some of the NFL's best, but on the other hand, some of his drops were ugly. Ugly as in, I'm wide open and ready to walk into the end zone ugly. He'll find out quickly that there's no room for those on an NFL roster. The second part of his game that underwhelmed me was his ability to make people miss in the open field. I guess I was expecting more from a 4-4-9 40-yard dash, but outside of his straight line burst, Tawa didn't show much wiggle on bubble screens and out in space. His 6.953 cone is a good indication he doesn't have much lateral agility or explosion to force many missed tackles with speed, but he will surprise you with some strength and power, often choosing to try and run through you instead of around you. Sure, he's got some mental lapses like the drop shown on tape before, but for the most part, Tao displays an outstanding feel for the ball when it's in the air. With the ability to get off press coverage and scoot downfield along the boundary with a second gear that surprises cornerbacks, it puts him in a position to use that big body to go up and attack the ball. With that physical style of play, in addition to great ball tracking deep downfield, Tao turns into a big play weapon when given the opportunity to use his big catching radius to pluck the ball out and away from his frame. When he gets some momentum early in games, Tao looks and plays like a confident target that begs for the ball, assuming he can win every one-on-one -on -one matchup. Tao uses those same skills to win with physicality down in the red zone too, displaying a great ability to go attack the ball with little room to work with in tight space.
He's better at route running than I originally gave him credit for too. While he isn't ultra explosive in and out of his cuts and is far from polished, he showed a good job of pushing his defenders upfield, forcing them to turn their hips before pushing back to the ball and once again consistently displaying a big and clean target for his quarterback to throw into. It's true at Syracuse he didn't run the biggest route tree and was used on a lot of vertical routes, but at the next level he should be able to broaden his game and continue to work at his routes. Much like Minnesota Vikings wideout Stephon Diggs, Towell learned under one of the best wide receiver coaches in the country and former NFL stud Keenan McCardell back at Maryland. Sure, he isn't polished coming out because of some drops, mental lapses, and a limited routery, but he creates late separation, and on tape, Towell plays like he can beat anyone with his confidence as a physical jump ball pass catcher that surprised DBs with his sudden late speed and physical frame to box out at the last second. Hey, Tao is a guy I'd be more than comfortable with as my number two option as a boundary receiver. I can take shots downfield with in one-on-one -on -one looks and also add another piece to my red zone game while I'm at it. If you can get him in the fourth round or later and are in need of a complimentary guy, I'd pull the trigger on Syracuse wideout, Amba Etta Tao.